to the 73rd International Boxing Tournament Stanja 2022. The finals will take place in the next few days with a total of 90 pounds remaining. The IPA has chosen this event to be part of the Golden Bell Series with a $200,000 to be given away. The final bout in light middleweight division is a walk up one. The winner is Vadim Musai from Russia. So we've got a walkover at light middleweight announced by our MC there. This is our opening fight or would have been our opening fight of this evening session. I'm Andy Clark and Vadim Musayev of Russia has got the walkover over his fellow countryman Ivan Stupin, if I heard that correctly. And that's a shame because I was looking forward to seeing that. Musayev got a silver in Belgrade at the Senior World Championships. Stupin I saw get a gold at last year's European under-22s. So, as I say, missing out on some potentially really good action there. And now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, the second bout of the this evening's finals will be the men's light heavyweight division. The record of this bout is a testimony from Kosovo. Now, Welcome on the ring, the boxer, fighting out of the red corner representing Bulgaria. So this is the men's light heavyweight division and this is Christian Nikolov of Bulgaria, hence the cheering in the background. We saw two finalists this afternoon for Bulgaria, Javier Diaz who lost his fight and then Stanimira Petrova, who's sitting just in front of me, away to my right-hand side, who won hers. Nikolov looking to make it two goals for Bulgaria. And now, his opponent, hiding out of the blue corner, is the boxer representing Uzbekistan on your John of Sonov. Uzbekistan picks up three gold medals this afternoon. Odil John Aslonov will be looking to try and make it four. Both of these two were at the World Championships in Belgrade. Nikolov won a couple of fights and lost a close one to Miron Chikov of Serbia. Aslonov went out to eventual gold medalist Rahim Gonzalez in what was a, a terrific fight to watch. Nikolov beat Silvio Schurler of Germany by unanimous decision in his semi-final. Aslanov beat Alfred Comey of Italy on a split decision 4-1. It's the 73rd Stranger tournament it started in 1950, the first event in what has been described as the Golden Belt Series, a 200,000 US dollar prize pot. The Golden Belt itself, the actual Golden Belt, is back in Romania, April 3rd to 9th, one of the grand old competitions of international boxing. We had the Botch Sky a couple of weeks ago. Great to see all these things rolling along again. We're in for a really busy year. I like watching these two in the World Championships. Nikolov, I thought, was a bit unlucky, maybe, against Miron Chikov of Serbia. It was a close fight. Aslonov in the blue of Uzbekistan, Nikolov of Bulgaria in the red. Aslonov will keep that high guard, and that's what he'll look to try and do. Close the gap quick, let go with hooks, tuck up, get onto the inside, and bang to the body as well. Gonzalez, Raheem Gonzalez, the American, stood with him when they fought in Belgrade. I didn't think it was a wise policy. I remember saying so at the time, but he managed to get the win. Gonzalez was in just fight after fight. Electrifying stuff on his way to gold. It really was. Nikolov will need to use that jab, that nice one-two, that right hand into the pit of the stomach there. He's got to keep Aslonov off him. If he can't, then the Uzbek, as I say, just get into range and crawl all over him.
covering up well there. There's one off, the right hand caught by the forearms. The right hand from Nikolov. He's looking to get on that jab, that's what he has to do. The damage around the left eye there of Aslonov brought into the fight with him. Pretty standard in these tournaments. Again, the one two from Nikolov, but taken on those formidable muscular levers of Odil John Aslonov. Just past the midway point of round one not an enormous amount clean has got through just yet the left hand there the third punch of that three punch combination from nikolov may have done but even if they're not landing clean he's got to keep throwing nikolov he's run off rolling forward rolling forward doubles up on the jab looks for the right hand the right hand counter there from nikolov this is warming up nicely into the final minute of Round one. As Lonov was stuck behind Dilshobek Rusmatov last year in terms of the Asian Championships and the Olympic Games for Uzbekistan. Missing with the left hand there. It's not that easy to pick between these two in this opening round. As I say, clean punching in terms of punches with the knuckle part of the glove landing on the target area of the torso or the front of the side of the head. Haven't been all that common. There's been plenty of punching, but a lot of it has hit gloves and forearms. As Lonov has been on the front foot, that could count with our five scoring judges ringside. But Nikolov threw his share there as well. So I'd be interested to see which way that one goes. Radoslav Pantaleev in action for Bulgaria in this session as well. At the end of the afternoon session, we had three golds for Uzbekistan and one each for Kazakhstan, Ireland and Bulgaria. And Aslanov has got it, split scoring, no surprise. Three of the judges have gone for him, the other two have gone for Nikolov. And I think he's probably just edged it there, Aslanov due to the fact that he was he was the more proactive of the two and this is showing us really what we did see he drops those forearms as long as and makes himself a difficult target to hit you can hit gloves easy but hitting gloves doesn't count so into the second these two swapping jabs right at the start of the round as long of to try and jab to the body. <laughs> Nikolov, I think, just trying to suck Aslanov in there on the ropes. Left hand into the chest from the Bulgarian. Aslanov again comes marauding forward. He's not reckless though, he's not really gung ho. He has his method, he does look to move that head. Stands a bit square at times, but rarely stands tall. Dips that shoulder and looks to throw that right hand over the top. It's a good contest, this. Lovely combination there from Nikolov. The, the long right uppercut, the second punch of it in particular. Turns southpaw now, a minute into the second round. He's looked for that overhand right quite a bit. As Lonov hasn't really landed it, did get through with a right hand to the body. Nikolov came back with his right. Combination downstairs, and I think he did manage to, to breach that, that guard of Aslonov's that time, Nikolov. Good right hand counter there for Nikolov. Aslonov opened up with a pretty expansive looking left hand, short right hand down the middle again there from Nikolov. He's having a good round here so far. Right to the body though from Aslonov, but doesn't get out quite quick enough and catches a right hand as he is trying to exit. He's got those counters going nicely in this second round here. The Bulgarian fighter, he's in red. Aslonov, Uzbekistan in blue. It's 
split scoring in the first round. There's that uppercut again as, as Lomov comes in. He's just giving himself enough room. And then, as I say, just throwing it long, Nikolov. And as Lomov is, he is a contender for being hit with something like that because he dips that head as he comes in. Just pushing off with the heel of the glove there. He was back fighter, the home crowd don't like that. Long right hand from Azlonov, doesn't quite make it to the target. The interesting thing about him is, is that he's got some real long arms on him, Azlonov. When he throws a jab from side, when you see it from side on, you can see that he's got some serious wingspan. He just doesn't really choose to use it. Bell goes at the end of round two. We had split scoring, as I say, 3-2 in favour of Azlonov in round one. I would go red corner in that second round, which for me would even it up at a nice, neat one apiece going into the third and final round. Well, the second round, all five judges have gone the way of Odil John Aslonov, and that gives him a 20 point to 18 lead with three out of the five judges, which is crucial. So the split scoring in round one, three, two in his favor has turned out to be very important because he's now got that significant margin with three judges. And that means that Nikolov needs need something massive in this second round. From what I saw from where I'm sitting here, and I'm in a good position, I thought that Nikolov counted as Lonov effectively in that second round, landed some really good shots. As Lonov was coming forward, as he had been in the first round, but I thought actually he was maybe a little bit less effective. So I'd have gone the other way with that one, but that's by the by. Two judges have got it 19 apiece, which is where I'd be at. Third and final round. Needs to be careful. He needs to be careful. The referee's having a word here with Aslonov. You don't want to be losing points in these three round fights. It's it's a major factor, or it can be when it happens. Aslonov just tying Mikolov up on the inside. The corners get given the scores. They know the scores. Mikolov will know. They'll have told him. He absolutely has to go out and win this round and he needs to win it comprehensively. That could play a little bit more into Aslonov's hands, but he got stung by right hand there. He was back, he was rocked onto his heels. Nice little uppercut there, also from Nikolov. A minute into the third and final round. Just inching forward there, Aslonov. Sees him coming in, throws the one-two. Nice combination from Nikolov. Aslonov comes back, but Nikolov again there. Second phase, lets his hands go. It's been a good fight to watch this midway through round three. Really has. Right to the body from Aslonov. movement there from Aslonov. Body work from Nikolov into the final minute. This our final at light heavyweight. Christian Nikolov, Bulgaria in the red, Odil John Aslonov, Uzbekistan in the blue. Dips that head again, Aslonov, and looks for that right hand. Made a little bit more room for the right that time, as well enough, and it was more effective. Managed to just sling it in around the back of the guard. That's a good example of what I was talking about. He has got that range on him. When he looks to keep it a bit more on the outside, he can do it because, as I say, he's got long, long arms. Well, there's no way that Nikolov has won this final round 10-8. It's been a close final round. 
for this as Lomofu was going to get this. He was 20 points to 18 up with three judges heading into the third and final rounds and he will certainly have, have done enough. But I thoroughly enjoyed that. It was a good fight. Hard to split them in the final round. The scores being the way they were, Nikolov had to really go after it. So it's difficult to cast too much of a judgment on it in that regard. I would have had it one apiece going into the third round for what that's worth. By split decision, blue from Uzbekistan. So as Lonov gets it, the home crowd don't like it. As I said, I would have had it one apiece going into that third and final round. And it was difficult to split them. Three judges, though, have gone. 3-0 as Lonov. And one has gone 29-28. Nikolov. And the other 29-28 as Lonov. Close fight, close fight. I think that maybe on balance Nikolov was a little bit hard done by there, but he was extremely keenly contested all the way through. So a silver for Bulgaria to add to the silver Javier Diaz got early on. And now the third round of today's evening's final will be in Mans Heavyweight Division. The referee of this bout is Luca Manilonga from Italy. Boxing fans, are you ready? Now welcome to the ring, the boxer fighting out of the ring. So can Radislav Pantelev add another gold medal to the one that Stanimira Petrova won this afternoon? This is the heavyweight division. Beat Soha Buafia of France, unanimous decision in the semi-finals. Boxed at the World Championships in Belgrade last autumn, lost to Julio Le Cruz in the prelims, so didn't get a great draw. Bronze medalist at the previous edition of the Worlds in 2019 and won here last year too. Beating Narek Manassian in the final. And his out of the blue corner is a boxer representing Uzbekistan, Malia Saidrahimov. And representing Uzbekistan, this is Maydai Saidraksimov, who got past Absal Kutibekov 5 0 in his semi final. Got a bronze medal in Belgrade. He ran into the cruise as well, but in the semi finals. Say Draksimov, Uzbekistan. Didn't get a look in for the Olympics last year. He was behind Sanjar Tosunov in the queue, but maybe now this is going to be his time. Right hand to the body there from Say Draksimov. Pantelev with that high guard will look to come forward. Right hand to the body there. Seemed to move Pantelev a bit. That was solid from Sejrak Seymour. The referee stopped things to have a quick word. I'm not entirely sure what about because that seemed like a, a legal punch to me. There's that one two from Sejrak Seymour. Pantelev marauding forward. This is where he needs to get the fight. He's got to get it up close. He needs to do whatever he can to, to get it at that range. 
Sejrak Simov, by the look of, me, look of him, has got the, the tools to keep this longer on the outside, and that's what he needs to do. Right hand to the side of the head there from Sejrak Simov. Goes with the left to the body. And to Lev trying to move that head on the way in. The referee again speaking to Sejrak Simov there. Long left hand to the body. I'm not sure what about. Keeping his punches up, maybe, but I don't think there was anything wrong with the two so far. Maybe just talking to him about slapping. That's another possibility. The gum shield has come out. The referee has stuck it in his pocket. He'll wait for a, a natural break in things before he stops boxing and gets that put back in. Say Draksimov again just keeping it on the outside is pinging Pantelev as he comes forward to the body, not so much to the head. Well, I'm not sure what it was that spilled out. It can't have been a gum shield because the referee would have, would have stopped things by now to get that put back in. And just talking to the pair of them about heads there. Heading into the final minute of the round, Pantelev catches Sejrak Simov with the right hand there, the crowd enjoyed that. He's losing this opening round so far, the Bulgarian, he's got to, to make his mark in the final minute. And when you fight like this, that's often what can happen. You have to stay patient, you have to trust the method. But OK, you might not have too much joy in the first two minutes, but you, but you will get to your man. Sejrak Simov there, just swinging and connecting with thin air. Pantelev has covered up fairly well, but enough has got through from the Uzbek, I would say. Just sitting down on that right hand better there, Sejrak Simov. Planting those feet and letting it go. Final 10 seconds. Nice little right hand there from Pantelev. Just rolled off to his right. And managed to find room for it. Well, it was the referee's badge off the front of his shirt that actually came off in the middle of the round there. He's just delicately reattaching it. So Draksimov taking it across the board there, 10 nines, easy round to score. Pantelev, as I say, will have to trust in his method, keep bringing the heat. He will lose the first round fairly often, fighting the way he does. But when you get into the middle of round two, that's the point at which what you're doing needs to start paying dividends. So into the second round, Sejrak Simov giving that ground, looking for the long uppercut. Pantelev with a big right hand, but he's a little bit of a slap. Sejrak Simov just fits him round the back of the head for good measure as Pantelev ended up with his back to him in the corner. Pantelev found a couple to the body there. Sejrak Simov, though, if he gets it at that distance, then he could just let his hands go. He does tend to lean in quite a lot, do you expect? The chin comes up, but Pantelev can't really get close enough to take advantage of that. So Draksimov just bundling him down to the canvas. He does need to be slightly careful here, the fighter in blue. The referee's spoken to him now a few times. I don't think he's done enough to warrant a point deduction, and indeed there hasn't been one, but... He certainly wouldn't want that. So heading towards the midway point of round two, and this is now reaching the critical stage for Pantelev, the middle minute of the middle round. This is when the pressure that he's trying to bring to bear has to start to make an impact. And at the moment, there's no particular sign that it will.
nice right hand there from Sejrak Simov. He avoided the left hook. He just stepped back and slightly out offline and then just punched down with his right hand, right to the body there. Then looks to try and sling one in round the back of the guard. The work rate has got to be high when you've got someone like Pantaleev in front of you. You have to just keep punching, keep him occupied. Don't let him get up close where he wants to fight. He's not really hurt Pantaleev at any point, but every time you hit him, every time you hit your opponent with a good solid shot, whether it's forearms, gloves, or it half gets through or it gets through clean, they, they have to stop, reset, and start again. And So Draksimov has kept his man off him, doing exactly that. Left hand followed by right. Pantalev got up a bit closer there. Closing stages of round two. Good right hand there from Beelsbeck and Pantalev just managed to soak that one up. You could see that it just setting that head backwards. That goes the bell at the end of round two, so that'll be two rounds in the bank there for Uzbekistan, who will be on course for their fourth gold of proceedings so far today. This day one of the finals. Day two coming up tomorrow. Well, one judge, Kosovan judge, has gone for Antalev in there, but the other four go for Sejrak Simov, so He's got that, that big buff, buff, buff for that big cushion going into the third and final round. And Pantaleev has, has got to find something huge here, to be honest. He needs 10 8. He needs to convert that one score of 19 apiece in his direction. And then with two of the other judges, he needs a 10 8 in this final round. And then for both of them to go his way on their judges' decision. It's unlikely, but this is heavyweight. If it's going to happen any any division, then the higher you go up in weight, the more likely it becomes. And again, forward comes Pantaleev, but Sejraksimov has just been happy to stand there, let his hands go, and just give it to him as he tries to walk him down. Nice right hand from Sejraksimov, who turns southpaw. The only way I can see this really going wrong for Sejrak Simov in this final round is if he gives away a point deduction. He just tapped Pantalev on the back of the head there a few seconds ago again when his opponent had spun round. There's absolutely no need for it. There's not anything to be gained from it at all. He's got this fight under control and just been told to keep his punches up there. I wouldn't be amazed to see a point go at some stage here. Again, he just clips Pantalev on the back of the head there. Good evasive work from the cameraman over in the neutral corner on the far side. Well, there we go. There we go. Just as I was saying it, he's hit him around the back of the head. The referee just, just spreading his arms wide there. And he's absolutely right because he's done it three times, at least three times and he's had to take the point. Now that changes things completely because if Pantaleev can win this round 10-9 and with the point deduction that turns into 10-8 and then we could have some judges' decisions to go on. So Draksimov off the back foot there again, just throwing that right hand. For me, the Uzbek is winning this final round. But if Pantaleev can produce a big finish here, then this will get very, very tight. Generally speaking, in my experience anyway, if you end up with level scores because of a point deduction, the judges, more often than not, give the nod in favour of the fighter who has had the point deduction, who would have won without it. That just seems to be what happens. It's not a rule, not by any stretch. Nice left hand to the body there from Sejrak Simov, who's just making this, or has made this, more difficult than it needed to be because he's only got himself to blame for that deduction. Left to the body again there from Sejraksimov. Pantalev 
He's just been coming forward, coming forward all the time throughout the whole nine minutes. Sejak Simov, for me, has done enough to win this three rounds to nil. Although you would probably say that this third round has been Pantaleo's best round of the fight. I don't think it's enough to, to win it. But should some of the judges disagree, then when you throw in the point deduction, this could get very, very sweaty for Madia Sejraksimov. decision so 4-0 29 27 what would have been 30 points to 27 with four of the judges 28 28 with the Kosovan judge And Uzbekistan pick up their fourth gold medal. So Bulgaria again just coming up short. Pantelev, Diaz, Nikolov all picking up silvers. Stanimira Petrova, who as I said is just in front of me. She managed to take gold for the home nation. I think we've got some medal ceremonies coming up now. It was a good fight, that. As I said, it's always interesting to watch those kinds of fights when you've got a very obvious formula. You've got the, the taller fighter who wants to keep it at range. You've got the shorter fighter who needs to try and move that upper body, get up tight and really get to work up close with those hooks and body work. He just couldn't quite bring it to bear, Pantelev. Sejraksimov had it in the tank to just move around him, keep him turning, keep him moving, and just keep throwing those hands accurately enough and with enough power on them to keep his man off. And the point deduction went because he just kept just tapping him around the back of the head for absolutely no reason when when Pantelev had, had spun around, it's a habit he needs to, to get out of. You can't be giving away points in these three round fights. Having a good day, Uzbekistan. They are having a very good day. And that's our involvement over, actually. Don't have any other fighters. We've got three fights remaining in the women's section welterweight, middleweight, heavyweight. Two bronze medalists, Tony Yas and Abdijapa Ulu. Tony Yas of the Netherlands, Ulu of Kyrgyzstan. And this was the walkover we had right at the start of the session. Ivan Stupin of Russia, silver medal, couldn't compete in the final. I'm not sure what the reason is, but it would have been an injury. And taking gold, therefore, without having to box Vadim Musayev of 
Russia also. Look at that left eye. Some damage there. As I said, it was a shame we didn't get to see the final because Stupin looked good at the European under 22s last year in Rosetto. I was out there for that, he got gold. And Musayev got silver in Belgrade at the senior men's, losing to Yuri Zakareyev in the in the final. Zakareyev who pulled off a remarkable double, youth and senior men's world champion last year. He got gold at the Botch guy actually a couple of weeks ago, he was voted best boxer of the tournament at 71 kilos. Just about enough room to get those four up on the top step. And next up, the medal ceremony for the light heavyweights. Just a few minutes ago, we saw that final between Christian Nikolov of Bulgaria and Odil John Aslanov of Uzbekistan. A 4-1 split, gold for Uzbekistan. Close fight. For Nikolov. Definitely could have got it if the scoring had gone his way in the second round. The second round was the one that I thought he deserved a bit better in. So the two bronze medalists, Silvio Schiller of Germany and Alfred Comey of Italy. Nikolov, Christian Nikolov of Bulgaria will pick up the silver and Aslanov of Uzbekistan will get the gold. And I think Nikolov and Aslanov are going to be in quite a few battles over the next few years.
gold medal and check for four thousand US dollars, two hundred thousand dollar prize pot for this first event in the golden belt series. Thousand dollars for each of the bronze medalists, two thousand for the silver medalist, four thousand for the gold medalist. A hundred thousand US the winners got at the men's world championships last autumn in Belgrade. The Women's World Championships, which were scheduled for last December, now in May in Istanbul. It'll be the same for them, of course. Christian Nikolov just doing a quick TV interview there with Bulgarian television just in front of the podium. You can see him there. So just going to let our colleagues get that done. And then I think we'll be moving on with the action. Three hundred and sixty eight fighters from over thirty countries taking part in the strand yeah. Most there's ever been, I'm told. I but just looking to make everything bigger, everything better, everything more global. Did a good job of that last year and it's continuing a pace this year. And now, welcome to the ring, the boxer, fighting out of the red corner, representing Germany, Stephanie Berger. So this is the women's welterweight final, and this is Stephanie von Berger of Germany. Beat the Olympic quarter finalist, Anna Lysenko of Ukraine by unanimous decision. Lysenko got to the final here last year as well. 21 years old, Von Berger. Not super experienced at top international level. Looks a good fighter, good skills. So that Dalgatova of Russia boxing out of the blue corner she beat Dariga Shakimova of Kazakhstan unanimous decision in her semi-final got to Tokyo where she boxed at 69 kilos went out in the early stages big difference between boxing at 66 as she is here and boxing at 69 might not sound like a lot but three kilos is 6.6 .6 pounds so very nearly half a stone if that's the measurement you deal in Just tucking the hair into the back of that head guard. And the instruction from the referee, Von Berger of Germany, staying loose in that red corner. Tall, long, lean kind of a fighter. So there goes the opening bell. Von Berger, Germany in the red. Dalgatova, Russia in the blue. 
and the formula here again is is quite simple for Dalgatova. She has got to get inside that length, that range of Von Berger, as she looked to do there. Close that gap quickly, move the head on the way in, employ that lateral movement, get up close. Von Berger has got to try and make the use of those natural, make the most of those natural advantages. Use that jab. Long one two. And just wanders in a bit square there, Von Berger. The feet crossed as she came forward, standing quite tall, and Dalgatova just managed to pick her off. Again, gets onto the inside there, the Russian, then looks to let go with those hooks. Maybe a little bit too close there, actually, if anything. Von Berger with a jab. It'd be really good to see her snap that jab. Carries that lead. Hand low, that's okay. The textbook will tell you to keep those gloves up in the on guard position, but if you carry it low and you can snap it up from underneath the eye line of your opponent, then it's often difficult to see, a bit more difficult to read. A bit messy this so far, midway through round one. over again there I think shuts down her own space a bit she's not got room to work in there she gets right up on Von Berger and her head's almost coming up underneath her chin and there's no room to to land anything that's better kind of distance there for Dalgatova but when she gets the opportunity it's almost kind of head down Hands thrown, left hand on the inside there though from Dalgatova again with a touch more space that brought more profit. She's got to try and get that jab going, Von Berger. She really has because at the minute Dalgatova is able to come forward without meeting all that much opposition at times, certainly not enough opposition. Final few seconds of round one. Having said that, there's not been a massive amount in this opening round. Good right hand there from Von Berger, but Dalgatova comes forward and lands a couple of her own. Bell goes at the end of round one. Berger staying on her feet in the red corner. Dalgatova taking the weight off. So 10 nines for the Russian, which is the way I would have gone with that one. She was the more aggressive, the more proactive. And that translated into her landing more clean work. Doesn't look great the way she goes about things at times, Dalgatova. People talk about clean work a lot in in all forms of boxing and really all you're looking for are clean punches it doesn't matter what they look like in terms of how they're delivered whether they're technically perfect or whether they look terrible a clean punch is a clean punch Dalgatova is one of those fighters who aesthetically maybe isn't all that pleasing but what she's doing here is effective enough she kicked off the round there with a the left hand which got through right hand two and Von Berger is happy to to stand in range and punch, but she stays there too long. So when she does have some success herself, generally speaking, something has come back. Right hand there and a left from Dalgatova. What Von Berger needs to do really against an opponent like this, keep her turning, keep her moving. Use that jab, use that one, two, double jab, right hand, step off. That's more like it there. Combination then just moved off to her left hand side. If she goes back in straight lines, then that is what Dalgatova absolutely wants. That's better from Von Berger also. Just took her feet out a little bit, landed a couple of punches and then moved.
couple of smearing hooks there from Dalgatova. Prior to that, though, Von Berger showing signs that she made some some adjustments in the in the second round. Looking for a way in there, Dalgatova found it eventually. Climbed into a left and a right, and that was decent work. Just staying out of range there, the Russian waiting for the opportunity and when she closes the gap, she closes it quick, came straight over the top of that low lead left hand with the right hand. And into the final minute and it's Dalgatova who has got the wind at her back in this second round now. After a good first minute, I thought, or certainly a better first minute from Von Burger. She just waits a little bit too long, Von Berger, at times. I keep saying it. She needs to just keep snapping out that jab, keep snapping out that jab, because when she doesn't punch, Dalgatova accepts the invitation. And the gloves are just not up there to protect her, Von Berger. They're down low around the waist. And she takes the shots rather than managing to avoid them. Bell goes at the end of round two. <laughs> Ten lines across the board again there. I wouldn't argue with that. So Dow gets over with a, a two point advantage heading into the third and final round. Von Berger, as I said, in the opening minute of that round, was throw a combination and then move. And that's really what she needs to do. If she holds her feet, then she's going to come off second best here. And towards the end of the round there, she was standing on the borderline of range, willing to trade. But that's a good example. She leads off with the right hand there, Dalgatova. Von Berger standing so tall is... It's just quite easy to hit with it because the gloves aren't up. She doesn't look to block anything. Just said she's 21 years old, hasn't been competing at this kind of level for, for all that long. So a serious achievement to get to the final here, but she's up against it. Needs a huge final round here, the fighter in red. Just moving around there, Dalgatova just moving around Von Berger, just waiting, waiting, waiting. And then just climbs in with the hooks again there, lets three of them go, couple got through. Certainly <laughs> Southport, Von Berger. Southport backhand there from Von Berger. Midway point of round three. Algatova, as we know, has got this one under control. 20 points to 18 up after two rounds. Final minute. Three punch combination, the third punch of it, that right hand up top landed.
Von Berger going forward has got to try and make this height and reach he's got work a bit better for it. Needs that jab, needs to extend it. And defensively, get those hands up a little bit, try and not stand quite so tall. Plenty to work with there, though. Final few seconds. Nifty looking right hand there from Dalgatova, who's won this. Touch of gloves between the two, she knows it. Von Berger knows it as well. But she's gained a lot of experience over the course of the week. So that Dalgatova gets the gold, Russia's second. Uzbekistan stand on five golds today. Russia have got two, and it was another clean sweep in that third and final round. So three rounds to nil with all five judges. There's been one for Bulgaria. There has been one for Ireland. There has been one for Kazakhstan. Two fights remaining, middleweight and heavyweight. In the middleweights, we've got Athena Bailon of Panama up in action against Ifra O'Rourke of Ireland. And then at heavyweight, women's heavyweight, 81 plus, Dolma Lumbanova of Russia, Lazat Kungabayeva of Kazakhstan. So here comes Bailon, a very experienced fighter, a double Olympian. Got to the last 16 in Rio, then the quarterfinals in Tokyo, where she lost to eventual gold medalist Lauren Price, a world champion at welterweight back in 2014. In her semi final, she beat Nadezda Riabets of Kazakhstan by unanimous decision. Ifra O'Rourke won every round against Anastasia Shamanova of Russia in her semi-final. Boxed in Tokyo, went out to Kian Lee early on. Lee went on to win silver, losing to the aforementioned Lauren Price in the final. <laughs> Kelly Harrington has won gold for Ireland already. Today O'Rourke will be busting to repeat that. Took up boxing quite late at 17, so has made a lot of strides in the seven or eight years since then. I think went down to the gym originally to keep up her fitness for, for Gaelic sports. It's very common that with boxers. They fancy the fitness that boxing gives. They're into other sports and then they go to the gym, they get bitten by the boxing bug and then that's it then. Once you're in this, you're in it, whether you're watching or whether you're fighting, it's, you get a taste for it, you get addicted to it, and there's no way out. Touch of gloves between the two. So Bailon Panama in the red, O'Rourke Island in the blue.
O'Rourke in that orthodox stance. Bylon, the taller of the two. Southport, little dab, jab there from Bylon. Looking to try and pump that lead hand. Right hand got through there from O'Rourke. Lead left hand, lead left hook as well from O'Rourke. Lands and good start for the fighter in blue. Bylon though, just looking to try and work that jab again. She needs that jab. O'Rourke with a little feint. Got into the middle distance there, was looking for a right hand to the body, couldn't quite land it. But you see her there just fainting with that front foot. She's trying to draw that jab and make her way past it. Steps onto the outside there and looks for that right. When you've got a southpaw against orthodox, you see it a lot in, in either boxing, much, much more than you do in pros. Then the coaching manual will tell you that they're competing for that space on the outside. You want your lead foot on the outside of your opponent's lead foot. And O'Rourke has done a good job of that so far. She's taken the outside pretty much every time she's looked to step in. She's stepping quite wide, actually, and looking to try and throw that right hand down the middle. It's a shoelace has come, come undone there. Almost halfway through this first round. Again with a faint stare, walk, walk, trying to draw that jab and then climbs into a, a lead left hook. Didn't really land that one. Combination to the body there from O'Rourke, but I think got caught by Bylon at that kind of middle range. Long left hand to the body there from the Panamanian. Jab just reached there for O'Rourke. Lead right hand got through from O'Rourke and then followed it straight onto the shoulder. She had to stretch for that one. The referee had given the instruction to stop boxing there. But that's not a bad policy from O'Rourke because when you've got to close that gap, you've got to really commit. And if you find that you're not quite going to make it, then if you just take it all the way onto the shoulder, it makes it difficult to counter. What you don't want to do is be stuck in some kind of middle ground. Bylon with a right hand and then just moves off to her right. O'Rourke gets up close. Looks to try and get those hands free. Put a lot into this opening round, the fighter in blue. Again, reaching for that right, the weight comes forward. Long left there from Bylon. Closing seconds of round one. She set a high pace there. O'Rourke, a touch of gloves between the two. I would go blue corner, that opening round. A lot of aggression there from O'Rourke. As I said, she's committing to those attacks. Sometimes the weight's coming over the top of that front foot a bit. The, the feet are crossing almost. But she follows through on those attacks. Bylon hasn't quite been able to just give herself the room she needs to, to time her on the way in. So four judges go the way of O'Rourke. India goes 10-9 for Athena Bailon. There's that feint with the front foot. And that time she was a bit too close. But she's got that spidery kind of reach Bailon. Short right hand got through there for O'Rourke. So into the second, Bylon needs his second. Just got to make sure this is still live going into the third. Both just letting their hands go at mid-range there. And when you look at the dimensions of these two, you would say that 
that kind of situation would suit O'Rourke better. But Bylon's actually quite comfortable just digging her toes in and finding that little bit of space. Quite often for tall fighters, they don't utilise that height and reach as much as they might. And Bylon is an example of that. She doesn't really have a stiff, strong jab or, or one-two. She doesn't necessarily keep it on the outside. The referee just having a chat with Bylon about holding there. A minute into the second round, she was short there, O'Rourke, without the attack as she came forward. Maybe just got clipped with a right hand there from Bylon. Right hand to the body, and she moved forward there, though she did give herself a touch of space there, Bylon. I think just managed to land a short left uppercut. O'Rourke. Again, in this round, though, the one making the running, the one coming forward. Slightly wearier look about her, though. As I said, she put a lot into that opening round. The tempo was high. Right to the body, but just got caught on the way out there, O'Rourke. Bylon has got to up it, second half of this round. Just over a minute remaining. She's got to put her foot down and, and start punching more, because I do think that she's beginning to feel this a bit, Ephra O'Rourke. Athena Bylon needs this second round. O'Rourke, as I say that though, just comes forward, lines up that right. Bylon just standing off. O'Rourke steps in, looks for a long right uppercut. She's dug deep and gone again at the end of the second round here. O'Rourke, right hand to the body, then gets up close, finds good distance there. A couple of right hands get through. Bylon just trying to cover up. And it's a standing count, standing count against Athena Bylon. Uh, just as I was saying that, that Bylon needed to, to step on the gas herself, because there were signs maybe I felt that O'Rourke was just feeling the pace that she'd set. It's O'Rourke actually who I think has put her foot down and taken that second round away from her opponent. Four one split in the scoring at the end of round one. And O'Rourke gets it across the board there, so a two-point advantage with four out of the five judges, which leaves Bylon with a lot to do to turn this around in the third and final round. So third and final round, Athena Bailon of Panama in the red. It's got to come out all guns blazing here this final three minutes. She needs 10-8, and that may well suit Ephra O'Rourke of Ireland in the blue. Bailon opening out early stages of the round, and these two just trading. And it's O'Rourke, I think, who's going to get the better of that type of fight. Lead right hand there, O'Rourke. Didn't quite land it. Got caught by a couple on the way in there. The fighter in blue. Bylon stepping off and finding a right to the body there as well. And she's looking better in this final round, Bylon, basically because she's throwing more. O'Rourke dictated terms in the opening two rounds. And she's still the one of the two here coming forward. Really looking to press it. Lands a good one-two there. The right hand just clattering into the side of Bylon's head. But Bylon in the opening minute was more aggressive. And that's a good body attack, but the referee had said stop boxing. 
as I said, at that middle kind of distance, when she just sets her feet, digs those toes in, she can get some really good leverage on her punches. Right hand there from O'Rourke. Goes straight down the middle. Slightly weary looking left hand there from Bailon into the final minute. She's having a best round of the fight here, Bailon. I wouldn't necessarily say it's enough to win the round because O'Rourke's landed plenty of good shots in this in this third and final round. And really, she's dominated this fight due to the fact that she's outworked Bylon right from the very beginning. Good right hand there from O'Rourke. Lead right hand again, and then just follows that straight in. And another right hand on the inside, and a left hook. Final few seconds, she's finishing strong here. This is going to be a second gold medal of the day for Ireland. Ephro Rourke will follow Kelly Harrington into the record books as a gold medalist at the 2022 Stranger Memorial Tournament. Unanimous decision win there for O'Rourke, so all of the judges going her way. She was in control heading into that third and final round. She gets that third round across the board. So four scores of 30 points to 27, which was what I got. 29-28 there with the Indian judge, second from top. And as I was saying, a dominant display. So just one more fight remaining now, and that will come in the women's heavyweight division, 81 kilos plus. Dulma Lumbanova of Russia and Lazat Kungabayeva of Kazakhstan, who won gold at the Asia Championships last May, saw her there in that competition. Got past Nandini of India by unanimous decision in her semi-final, Lumbanova beat Christina Tukacheva, also of Russia, also 5-0. Kugabayeva also a former world champion. But that was just the highlights of that gold medal win there for Ephra O'Rourke. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the last final part of today's program, the boxers in women's heavyweight division. The referee of this battle is Ken Hansen from Denmark. Now, welcome to the ring, the boxer, fighting on the red corner, representing the Russian Boxing Federation, the Lofala. So here comes Lumbanova. Presenting the Russian Boxing Federation. Two gold medals for Russia so far today. And our opponent fighting out of the blue corner is the boxer representing Kazakhstan, Laza Kungabayeva. Here comes Kungabayeva, who will start as favourite here. I mentioned the pedigree that she's got.
So Russia in the red, Kazakhstan in the blue. Ava just planting a solid jab there into the chest of Lumbanova. Solid looking left hand there from Kunga by Ava. Lumbanova though took that fine. I think she just managed to take her weight away and ride it slightly combination to the body from Lumbanova who was doing the right thing at the minute she's using the not the very outside of the ring but moving around Kungabayeva keeping her turning and moving that's what she needs to do Kungabayeva gets set she will just come forward and let her hands go for Lumbanova this is more a case of sticking and moving, setting her feet when she needs to. And making sure she never stays in one place too long. Good jab there from Lumbanova. Flick through the guard again, that lead left hand. Only just got there, but it did land. With a right hand to the body. None of these are bothering Kunga Bayeva, but they're scoring punches. Lead right hand there from Lumbanova, and then takes a walk. Moving off to the right as she throws her right hand. Backed up towards the neutral corner. That's more where Kunga Bayeva will want her, but Lumbanova, wise to that, just skirts off to her left. A minute remaining in round three. And this is the kind of fight I'd, I was talking about earlier on the the formula is straightforward Kunga Bayeva will bring that pressure to try and make it as educated as she can she look to walk Lumbanova down get to her and when she does land some heavy shots Lumbanova is on the move but she's got to keep this up for nine minutes right hand to the body the scoring punches the vast majority of them have been landed by Lumbanova in this opening round Kunga Bayeva has got to keep the faith that what she's doing will work Nice busy hands again there from Lumbanova. I don't think any of those really got through. Kunga Bayeva missing with that left hand. Little right hand down to the body again there from Lumbanova. And once again, Kunga Bayeva won't have felt any ill effects from that at all, but it is a scoring punch. Bell goes at the end of round one. Lumbanova gets it across the board, easy round to score because, as I say, almost all of the clean punching came from her, but she's got to keep this up for the whole nine minutes. Kunga Bayeva will continue to try and hunt her down and it's got to start working around about that midpoint, that second minute of round two. It's not long to wear an opponent down, nine minutes, but it can be done. So into the second. Kunga Bayeva of Kazakhstan in the blue, Lumbanova, Russia in the red. 
Opened by Ava. Got through with a combination there, but Lumbanova managed to turn it. Pivoted around that front foot. Lumbanova just being forced to engage a little bit more in the second round here. Kunga by Ava, I think, is looking just to up the tempo a bit. She can't just plod forward. She's got to really try and bring the heat. Raise that temperature bit by bit as she can. Good combination again there from Lumbanova, and that's the effect it can have. It might not hurt Kunga by Ava, but you just saw at the end of it there, after she'd taken those two, three punches, Kunga by Ava, she was a bit disorganised. She's then got to get herself together, turn, find her opponent, who in the meantime has ghosted away, start again, try and build another attack. Right hand from Kunga by Ava landed. A left on the inside there from a two. She's having more success in this second round, but it's still Lumbanova. Who, for the most part, is managing to stay away. And also land. Not with anything major, but with scoring punches. Swing and a miss there with the left hand from Kunga Baeva. Lumbanova is slowing down. Left hand there from Kunga Baeva was solid. That moved Lumbanova. And she's finding it increasingly difficult to keep Kunga Baeva off her here, Lumbanova, I think. And she's got to try and turn the screw in the final minute of this second round here, the Kazakh. Just following her around the ring a bit here, Kunga Baeva. Not really cutting the ring off on Lumbanova as she needs to do. And she's done well in this final minute, the Russian. I wouldn't say she was in trouble or looked like she was really in trouble midway through the, the second round, but just got the feeling that the tide might be turning a bit. And that Kunga Baeva was, was starting to, to get to her. Good right hand there from Lumbanova. See the determination on Kunga Baeva's face there, gritted teeth as she was looking to come forward. But Lumbanova, I think, has done enough in that second round. It was a better round for Kunga Baeva. She did manage to land more. Came forward with a bit more intensity, and she's making Lumbanova work very hard here. Working very hard herself. Another qu clean sweep there for Russia, so a two point margin heading into this third and final round. So Kunga Baeva needs something big in this third round. She needs 10 8s, and that is never an impossibility in the heavyweight division. She needs to land a. A big bomb here, Kunga Baeva. But that's the formula. It's a straightforward formula. It's a difficult one to bring into effect. She's got to just go for it this final round. And Lumbanova needs to stay away. What she doesn't need to do is, is hold her feet and engage at any point. She can lose this final round 10-9. That's no problem. Nice jab from Lumbanova. Just moving one way, then the other. Three punch combination again and then steps off.
And Kungabayeva just cannot get hold of Lumbanova. Try as she might, and she certainly has tried throughout the course of the fight. She's just not really been able to land anything solid on it, just to slow her down. Nice long right hand there from Kungabayeva. And she looks to try and quicken up those feet. But Lumbanova has proved that she's got it in the tank here. This will be a third gold medal for Russia. The third of this session, actually. They kicked off with that walkover. Vadim Musayev getting the win against Ivan Stupin. That would have been a Russian gold medal. Whatever happened, because Stupin's Russian as well, so they were guaranteed one there. And they got one through Sardat Dalgatova as well with her win at welterweight against Stephanie von Berger. So at the end of the first day of the finals, Uzbekistan will have five gold medals. Russia will have three. Ireland will have two, Bulgaria have got one, and Kazakhstan will have one as well. 13 finals to come tomorrow, 25 in total, 13 for the men, 12 for the women. Final few seconds of this, our final fight of the day. And then we'll have the medal ceremonies for you. Touch of gloves, and it is going to be Dorma Lumbanova of Russia who will take this one by unanimous decision, even if she has lost that final round with any or all of the judges. She had a two-point lead going into it. And there's no way that she could possibly have lost that final round. 10-8, she's won that round 10-9, in my opinion, which would give her a 30-point to 27 win. So goal for Russia to finish day one of the finals. Dorma Lumbanova boxed well, boxed to a plan. Had to keep her opponent there, Kungabayeva. He would have been carrying quite a lot more weight than her. She had to keep her moving, had to keep her turning, and did that. Lancing her with that jab, right hand, two, three punch combinations. And got the win. So four medal ceremonies we have got remaining men's heavyweight and then the three women's finals we've just seen welterweight middleweight and heavyweight This is some action from the women's welterweight final. This is Von Berger against Algatova. Oh, 
Our men's heavyweight fighters are just being lined up on the right-hand side of the podium. Gold was won by Madiar Sejraksimov of Uzbekistan. Silver for Radoslav Pantelev of Bulgaria. Bronze is for Soha Buafia of France and Abzal Kutibekov also. This is Ifro O'Rourke winning her gold at middleweight against Athane Bailon. And then the fight we've just seen. Good boxing, composed boxing from Lumbanova. There are the heavyweights. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony for the men's heavyweight category of the day. Let us invite the medalists to the podium. Medals and diplomas will be presented by... So Pantelev there on the left-hand side. In the middle will be Sejrak Simov. On the right-hand side, the two bronze medalists, Buafia and Kutibekov. In third place, and women of the bronze medal in the men's heavyweight category, Sohebo Fia from France. And from Kazakhstan, Alza Kutibekov. Absal Kutibekov. Kazakhstan. Radoslav Pantelev will be next. All the support for Pantelev has been at this a long time. Good experience at WSB when that competition was in operation as a pro as well. But the man in the middle, Sejrak Simov, got the better of him. Sejrak Simov with a bronze in Belgrade at the men's senior world championships. And a good start to 2022 with a gold at the Stranger.
So swiftly on to the women's welterweight, Stephanie von Berger of Germany will make her way to the left-hand side. Silver medalist Sardat Dalgatova of Russia in the middle will get the gold and our two bronze medalists there are Anna Lysenko of Ukraine and Dariga Shakimova of Kazakhstan. Olympic quarter finalist last year, Lysenko. Shack him over of Kazakhstan. Stephanie von Berger representing Germany. And Sardat Dalgatova of the Russian Boxing Federation. Now the women's middleweights. Saw so that final between Ifor O'Rourke of Ireland and Athena Bylon of Panama that O'Rourke won. Three rounds to nil. To take gold, Bylon silver. Our two bronze medalists, Nadezhda Riabets of Kazakhstan and Anastasia Shamanova of Russia. Ireland's second gold medal of the day. Kelly Harrington got one at 60 kilos earlier. Nadej de Riabets.
Anastasia Shamanova. That's Athena Bailon, the Panama, two-time Olympian. And Efro Rourke picks up gold. From Ross Common, went out early at the Olympic Games, ran into Kian Lee, who picked up silver. And one more medal ceremony to come. That for the fight we just saw at the end of the session, the women's heavyweight final won by Lazat, run by Dulma. I beg your pardon, won by Dulma Lumpanova of Russia against Lazat Kungabayeva of Kazakhstan. The bronze medalist Kristina Tukacheva of Russia and Nandini of India. So Kunga Bayeva on the left there, in the middle, Lumpanova on the right hand side to Kacheva and Nandini. This is Nandini, boxing for India. Christina Tukacheva of Russia. Kungabayeva, the Asian champion from 2021 last year out in Dubai. And Lumpanova with gold for Russia. So Russia 
dominating this evening session with three goals out of six. Uzbekistan, though, the overall victors on the day with five goals in total. Ireland with two, one each for Bulgaria and Kazakhstan. So that concludes day one of the 2022 Stranger Memorial Tournament finals. I will leave you with that image of our medalists in the women's heavyweight division. We'll be back tomorrow with 13 more finals. The timings are the same, the afternoon session, two o'clock local time, so midday GMT, and then six o'clock local time, four o'clock GMT. Do you please join us for that. <laughs>